I'm Stacy. I'm Jenny. And this is Learning for Life, a homeschool podcast. We are two homeschoolers who use different methods, curriculum, and strategies to make it all work. Our goal is to help parents teach kids how to develop a lifelong love of learning. Welcome to another homeschool how-to. These are quick little episodes where we take an in-depth look into one very specific topic. I'm Stacy, and today we are going to take a look at supplemental curriculum. What is it? What does it do? And do you need it? So before I begin, I just want to let you know that supplemental curriculum is not something that is set in stone, that everything I say here is going to be the end-all be-all. So it's supplemental for a reason. You can use it however you want. All right, so first, what is supplemental curriculum? In short, supplemental curriculum is gonna be any type of curriculum that is used alongside your main curriculum. So if you're using a reading program, like All About Reading, that's gonna be your main reading curriculum. But you may also want to use some Bob books as supplemental or an Evan Moore phonics workbook to help supplement some of the learning. And that is just fine to do, But you know that that all about reading is kind of more your core. That's what you're going to use every day. And then you might use this other one every so often. So if you're using all about reading for your kids phonics and you're using an Evan Moore phonics workbook to supplement, you're going to want to try to make sure that that Evan Moore workbook is not introducing a ton of new sounds that your child hasn't learned with you in the main curriculum yet. So the last thing that typically differentiates supplemental curriculum is that the supplemental curriculum only focuses on a very specific set or a narrow set of standards or topics, and it's not a complete or comprehensive curriculum. So again, all about reading, its entire goal is to teach your child to read, and it has all the standards and all the sounds and all the tools that you need that it it can be used on its own. But a supplemental curriculum is just going to have certain pieces of the puzzle and you may need, if you wanted to use just supplemental curriculum for as your core curriculum, you would probably have to find and piece together different supplemental pieces. I hope that made sense. All right, so what are some examples of supplemental curriculum? Many workbooks like Evanmore, Spectrum, and I would even consider BrainQuest a supplemental curriculum, even though BrainQuest does say that they follow the standards and they meet all the standards. Um, I just don't feel like it is robust enough. Another example of supplemental curriculum could be online learning games. Um, Even if they are advertised as a complete curriculum, you can still use it to supplement. I know that reading eggs and math seeds are advertised as complete curriculums, and so you could use that as your main curriculum. But in our household, I have reading eggs and math seeds for my kiddos, and that is what they get to do for fun time, and they love it. They love being able to go in and play, and I know that they're learning but they think that it's extra fun and that's their playtime. So I love using online learning games and websites as just something my kids can do on their own for computer time, and I know they're learning. It's just, it's fabulous. Some other ways for supplemental curriculum, it may not always be an actual workbook or curriculum, but it could be some classes um, outside of the home. So you may be teaching a science curriculum, but maybe you found this really cool like workshop that your kid can attend that goes along with your science topic of, of that month. And so that would be something to help supplement or even enrich your science curriculum. Another example of supplemental curriculum, there are so many learning crates out there. You've got KiwiCo, History Unboxed, Mel Science, and so many others that these can all be used to help supplement the learning you're already doing. But some people will even just use these as kind of the diving board for their curriculum. They'll use the Kiwi Crate and whatever topic it is and start there and then they will kind of create their own curriculum based off of that. So again, in that case, you don't really have a main or or supplemental curriculum if that's the way you're running your homeschool, but you could use the learning crates as just an extra supplemental option. Lastly, I don't want to forget to add in field trips. They are definitely, you know, you can use a field trip as kind of the main core, but typically they're going to be used as kind of a supplemental. It's not really a curriculum. It's more of an activity, but I just wanted to throw that in there to 
just remind you that the field trips you go on, the activities you do outside the home, those are also something where your kids are learning and they're going to be getting value out of that. And I just wanted to make sure to throw that in there. Next, let's talk about when you should use supplemental curriculum. I mean, the short answer is whenever you want. <laughs> Sounds like a silly question for me to put in here to give that answer. Um, but no, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to use supplemental curriculum. But one thing I do like to look for is if I notice one of my children not doing well in their main curriculum, I may want to pause their main curriculum and supplement with some extra practice or maybe add the supplementation in while we're still moving through the curriculum. So that's one thing I look for is if I have a child that's struggling in the main curriculum, I may want to bring in some supplementation. Also, don't forget to not overdo it. Sometimes kids really do just need a break or a little bit more time to master concepts. It doesn't always mean that you need to just jump straight to supplemental curriculum. And lastly, you can use supplemental curriculum for fun. Don't forget about that. Like I said, I use the online curriculums as supplemental and my kids find it super duper fun. So if your kid is one of those kids that just likes doing workbook pages, give them a workbook page. It'll be great. Um, and it's really, really simple to implement whenever you want. Now, I do want to address, can you use the wrong supplemental curriculum? So in my opinion, the supplemental curriculum should all, again, build on what the student has already been taught. You don't necessarily want to be using something that's supplemental to the main curriculum and is teaching brand new concepts that hasn't been taught in that main curriculum yet. It can be done, like I said, I have done it <laughs> more um, on accident, but it has been done and I, my kids are fine, I think. So anyway, if your supplemental curriculum is not working or it's causing more stress or um, causing your child to shut down, then feel free to just drop it and move on to something else because it's not working. All right, so before we leave, I know I've chatted a little bit about what I use for supplemental curriculum and when I use it, um, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a bigger picture on how I use supplemental curriculum in my homeschool. So mostly I use supplemental curriculum to keep my kids learning when I'm not there giving them direct instruction. I do try to make sure that I have a balance of curriculum that my kids can do independently. Um, my kids are K through three, so the third grader has more independent work than the kindergartner. So I like to have a balance of what they can do independently and what I need to be there for them teaching them. The way I accomplish this is with those online learning games. I use Reading Eggs and Math Seeds. I use ABC Mouse and iReady. Um, and I use them after their main curriculum is done for fun, like I mentioned. And then I also will utilize these on those busy days or even bad days where you just don't feel like, you know, homeschooling is just not going the way you wanted, but you know that you want to get something done and you can go ahead and have those learning games at the ready. And you know they're at least gaining some knowledge, um, even if it's not your what your plan was for the day. I'll also use supplemental uh, workbooks. I do really love the Brain Quest. I order a Brain Quest workbook for the summer for my kiddos. This summer, we spent a lot more time out doing things. We're not in doing the workbook pages. So I actually have about, they've only completed about half of it. So I'm keeping that in my homeschool closet. And I'm going to be saving that for like sick or again, busy days where there's just not much time to do our regular curriculum. But I know, hey, do like two to three pages out of this. And I know we've at least covered something that day. So I really love utilizing the workbooks. So lastly, I also will use supplemental curriculum when I notice one of my children are having difficulties. So um, my oldest was having a difficult time with his multiplications of I think it was seven, eight, nines. Yeah, sevens, eights, nines. And it was taking him a lot longer to really get into the rhythm and his curriculum was moving pretty fast. You know, it was only a couple lessons between the eights and the nines. And so he had barely just started mastering the eights before he had to move to nines. So it was just moving too fast. I just kind of supplemented some extra math worksheets. So some multiplication facts. I found this is when I started implementing flashcards. So I used flashcards as supplemental curriculum just to give kind of that extra practice. He... By the way, I don't know what your thoughts are on flashcards, but this kid can do all of his math in his head. So he just needed to like, I don't know, he has one of those crazy like good memories. He's only in third grade and I already feel like he's doing some of the like mental problems faster than me. So whew, I don't even know. 
But anyway, so we did the flashcards and that really seemed to help him. And then some of the extra worksheets for the, the practice for multiplication. So again, you can use supplemental worksheets whenever, wherever you want. There's very little that you could do wrong with it. There's very little that you could do wrong with using supplemental curriculum. And on that note, I would like to thank all of you for listening. And if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to go and rate and review. It really helps other people find our podcast so they can listen in too. You can always find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more content and to keep up with us. And as always, we love hearing from you. So if you feel so inclined, feel free to reach out to us through email at kidslearningforlife at gmail.com. And with that, I'll see you next time.